overpopulation and the spread of fatal venereal and blood-borne diseases, such as syphilis and AIDS, are proving to be your self-punishment to the point of creating the nearly complete destruction of your human species on Earth. So let there be no misunderstanding. The following behaviors are specifically and undeniably against or contrary to the laws of God and the creation. 1. Any homosexual sexual activity between two or more men is strictly forbidden. 2. Any homosexual sexual activity between two or more women is strictly forbidden. 3. Any bisexual sexual activity between two or more men and women is strictly forbidden. Keep in mind we are specifically referring to sexual activities, not love, intimacy, sharing soul deep closeness and specialness of the friendship, cohabitation, sharing living quarters slash home together, and friendship between members of the same sex. Meaning that it is the lewd, lustful and irresponsible sexual act that is specifically and strictly against God and life. For any anal, sodomy, sexual intercourse performed between any persons, male or female, is strictly forbidden. 5. Any sexual activities performed with animals, bestiality, by any human is strictly forbidden. 6. Any sexual activity performed by ones closely related within the same family line, incest. For example, brother and sister, father and daughter, uncle and niece, aunt and nephew, cousin and cousin, mother and son, grandfather and granddaughter is strictly forbidden. 7. Any sexual activity performed by any, male or female, adult upon or with any child is strictly forbidden. 8. Prostitution, the act of offering oneself, man or woman, to another for sexual relations in exchange for payment of same, is strictly forbidden. 9. Any sadistic or masochistic sexual practices performed by anyone or ones upon self or others is strictly forbidden. Sadistic, 1. A tendency to take delight in being cruel. Masochistic, 1. A condition in which sexual gratification depends largely on undergoing physical pain or humiliation. 2. A tendency to derive pleasure from one's own suffering. 10. Any voyeuristic, one who is sexually gratified by looking at sexual objects or acts, activity or any participation in pornographic, sexually explicit and obscene, materials, i.e., movies, magazines, books, artwork and objects is strictly forbidden. Please understand that it is this preoccupation with behavior of lustful and lascivious physical pleasure that you must each choose to avoid and rise above spiritually. The corruption and preoccupation with sexual thoughts, words and actions has become hypnotizingly obsessive and also terribly degrading to the spirit of life of the one. This is not love by any definition. Can you not see this truth before you and within you? Your sexual obsession must stop, if you are to reach beyond your mortal body and into the kingdom of God. Many of you, by now, are probably wondering about the act of masturbation, stimulation of sexual organs by oneself. First we read the above paragraph. Masturbation is a self-pleasure sexual act upon self and it is also what most of you couples are doing, when you have sex together and call it making love. The only difference is that it is the sharing of mutual masturbation with your partner. Mutual masturbation is not divine sexual union for celebrating procreation. When one is an adult and does not wish to have children, the seeking of sexual pleasure myself or with another is a transgression upon self simply, because you are denying and limiting your spiritual creative potential within. The sexual desire, in this time on your place of extreme sexual preoccupation, begins for many youngsters at puberty. Many will have sexual release or dreams, while they sleep. With the careful and loving guidance of the parents well before and during this time, the child will not be frightened of the changes in his slash her body and will most likely occasionally indulge in masturbation for either curious exploration or release of the physical body. Moderate or occasional masturbation done in privacy by any, either child or adult, is not harmful to or against life, until it becomes an obsessive preoccupation. Also masturbation can be a means of self-punishment and this is most harmful to the spirit of God within. Remember this parents, it can also become very harmful to a child, if through his training, he is taught to fear or despise his genitalia, or be made to feel guilt for self-sexual exploration or masturbation. He must learn about his personal responsibility and must understand all the laws of God including those governing procreation. But if you make the child feel fearful, shameful or guilty about his own personal sexual exploration, you may actually be creating for him obsessive preoccupation with sexuality. 
If the child is not exposed to constant sexually stimulating media, he will quickly lose interest after initial self-exploration. If his creative potential is encouraged, nurtured and supported by his parents and teachers, the more spiritually aware children and adults will either not have much interest in, or gradually lose interest in sexual exploration of any kind. It is much healthier for the spirit, if this process of becoming detached from sexual feelings is natural and by choice because of true spiritual understanding and awareness. What you once have labeled sexual energy or libido is actually a corruption of the creative and nurturing potential of the spirit of God within you. Let us repeat this, your sexual energy slash libido is actually a corruption of the creative and nurturing potential of the spirit of God within you. Let us see, how your Fink and Wagnall's dictionary defines libido, 1. Sexual desire or impulse. 2. The instinctual craving or drive behind all human activities. Did you read that clearly, friends? Instinctual craving or drive behind all human activities. The catch is, precious ones, sex is not the instinctual craving or drive that was created by God, this was your creative, nurturing drive to know and celebrate God within you, to see or create the ever-unfolding expansion and adventure of life. The truly loving divine union, that of male-slash-female experiencing their creative potential through the sexual act for procreation, was created to be a union of divine loving devotion and celebration of the gifts of oneness shared ellipsis points and of new life created from God. Rarely do ones feel true love, caring friendship, affection and intimacy toward their mates on your plane. Most have simply forgotten what love is. You think perhaps you and your mate are one of the rare exceptions? Here is a test, for you. How long would your marriage and commitment last, if today you completely stopped all sexual activity with one another? Think about this carefully. Do you truly give of yourself to your mate sexually and otherwise, because you wish to please them? To please both of you? To please yourself? You once think your sexual orgasm is ecstasy? You even limit ecstasy. You see, you are not your desires, you are not your emotions. You are the spirit of life of God, and your spirit is the master over your desires and emotions. Don't you see, that you have simply chosen, in your illusion of ignorance and confusion, to make your emotions and desires the master over your spirit ellipsis points your godness? This corruption of your creative potential was created, conditioned and molded by the Antichrist. You simply bought the lie, as truth and have become addicted to your desire for sex. You don't believe your sexual desire is created. Look around you today. Your advertising media as well as your magazines, television and movies are creating your desires, for you by conditioning and molding you through false images of what is beauty, what is sex appeal and attractiveness. Why does and has this desire creating worked? Because the Antichrist first molds the false images and then plays upon your fear of being too unattractive, and worthy, and popular and simply rejected by others who you allow to judge you, as a human being. The Antichrist keeps you bound by the false promises created by your desire to be worthy of life so you are too busy trying to fit the false mold and therefore do not develop your creative spiritual potential within. How dare you feel unworthy because of believing the nonsense of false images? Please remember this truth. You are God's temple. Advertisers are always selling their image of what you once call romance and you are encouraged to think it means passionate sexual fulfillment. Your dictionary describes romance, as, 1. A love affair. 2. A kind of love between the sexes, characterized by high ideals of devotion, and strong ardor. 3. Adventurous, heroic, or exotic nature, romance of faraway places. When you crave romance, whether you know it or not, it does not mean sexual affair, dear ones, it means love affair, you are craving to experience within you God's love of life, you crave to feel alive, i.e., warm and intense feelings, eagerness and zeal. Why? Because you are bored and spiritually unfulfilled with the self-created limits of your life. Limits which the controlled media has set you up, for in the first place. You are out of balance and you are seeking to ignite your creative potential within. Romance is the promise of adventure and joy for experiencing the spirit of life, of God, within you. You see, romance is not sexual adventure or a place to go, it is your desire to feel and know God within you. You can experience romance through the sharing of devoted and adventurous love of life with your mate, 